and then for the length you can increase the length so it's just secluded to there hello and welcome to this blender tutorial brought to you by the Louis art and it's a pleasure to have you guys here with me my name is Emmanuel Okafo and today I'll be introduce introducing you guys to grooming inside blender so if you're not familiar with the word grooming it's basically adding hairs to your characters um, you could add hairs to um, objects so I'll be introducing you guys to it if this is your first time uh, of trying to use it so I've um, analyzed and laid down six steps um, which will help you create decent looking groom in your scenes so the first one we'll be looking at is the hair sections the next is the hair guides and hair modifiers also we'll be looking at the hair distribution in blender then we'll be moving on to the child particles and we shall be talking a little about the hair settings and finally hair rendering inside blender so if you stick with this tutorial to the end you i assure you that you will not be bored and you're going to get something out of it so let's look at the hair section so this is a nice looking character and looking at the hair it looks nice so what makes it nice there are so many things that have come together to make it nice but it looks complex at first glance but then if you divide the hair into sections, you, you realize that it, if you break it down, it becomes more easier to um, understand. So I've gone ahead and color coded the hair um, sections and also given it some uh, example labels. So um, for the red um, sections, I've named them side hairs. So this uh, is a section of the groom you also have the front hairstyle you also have the side jams and you also have the back hair so in total we like if we're going to create this in blender we have created like four particle system at least that's what i'm going to do and that's what i'm trying to show you guys so i will have created like four um, different particle system which enables me to control the whole particle system and there are many advantages to um, dividing your particle system to various um, systems so let's move on so the next we'll be looking at is the hair guides and modifiers so hair guides are just basically curves which you can um, use to um, groom the hairstyle so it's uh, blender gives you really powerful grooming tools like combing cutting the hair um, adding puff so uh, these tools are being um, you can use these tools to affect the hair guides because it will be really tedious to in, uh, manually play with this hair curves so that's why they give you the tools to play with the hair guide then after you finish using the hair guides then you can add um, hair modifiers so I've gotten some examples of those hair modifiers which you could use in blender so they are the clumping uh, which you could use to um, tighten up the hair to, uh, to um, to tighten up the hair with the hair guides so don't worry we're going to have like a practical example after this um, theoretical part so we'll be looking also there's the pattern um, this is used to um, create space it's like um, the opposite of clumping in a way and you have the techniques um, which gives you like coil hairstyles this is like um, different styles like braided everything you can think of and you also have the roughness that gives you cool effect as you can see in the one with the modifier you have um, nice um, even random hair just frizz hair just hanging over the whole hair so that's basically that's with the hair modifiers so next we'll be looking at the hair distribution the hair distribution basically is how you can isolate the hair system on a particular space um, particular section of the model so like in the first part these sections we can use the hair distribution to just isolate the hair on that particular section so it's to not cross into the red zone or the green um, green zone so for the hair distribution we have two main um, types these are the vertex group which you could use to isolate some certain sides of the hair and also we could use texture map um, let's move on to child particles. So Blender has two main children distribution types. So these are the simple and the interpolated. So simple child particles are position based, has a position based distribution. This means they only sprout where the parents and the parent hair or the guide hair 
exist. So this is an example of that. You can see we have just two um, strands of hair, just um, two hair particles, sorry, two guide hair just standing there. But if we add the simple um, child method, you just see the hair just sprout out from where the guide hair is located. But uh, unlike that, the interpolated children type is quite different. So you have the guide hair and if you add the interpolated, it tries to fill up that space. So you should just bear all this in mind when we get into Blender, then we can actually um, use this into, or we can put this into example. So um, the next is just the Blender hair system, which I, I, as I was doing the PowerPoint, I just realized it would be better to actually show you guys practically and also the hair rendering. Um, so let's get into Blender and start up. So we're here in Blender and let's start um, the practical part of this tutorial. Um, before any other thing, I have the screencast key here. So in case you want to follow all the shortcuts I may press and you can also follow the mouse and everything. So we'll be working with this model which I created for one of my portfolios. And yeah, so it's designed to work for this tutorial. Um, so first, before I start adding my particles, I like to work on a separate mesh from the hair, from the head. This is this gives me very um, very gives me enough control in the future for any other thing I want to do with this. And this also speeds up the simulation process because Blender just have to calculate for a smaller region rather for rather than the whole head um, whole body mesh. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. So uh, I'm going to just select this and hide it. That's possible because I have sims so I can be able to select that easily. And I will just go into edit mode and select some faces and it's not doing that. I will just select some faces like this. So I need some here. Go. Delete this. I need you. And maybe this one. Okay, so let's see the selections. So it's looking okay. I will just shift D, sorry. Shift D and duplicate it. So we have a separate hair cap. So I want to go and delete some of the particle system which it came with. And I'll just go ahead and delete this one too because we don't need that for this tutorial. Okay, so once we have a mesh to work with, I like to go ahead and add more subdivisions. So what this gives me is more geometry to work with later because I will be using vertex paint in this in my pro, in the process of creating this hair and it works better if you have much geometry to play with. So I'm happy with the base mesh. I'll just apply the rotation and scale and also center the origin to the geometry. Okay, so this is the process, this is the place we are right now. And before we move forward, I would like to give it a name. I will call this hair cap. Cool. And also I will just give it a color. Call this hair mat. mat. Okay, cool. I can go back to my material mode. So we have something like this. So let's add the particle system. So if you remember when I was showing you guys the st six steps of creating a decent looking groom, uh, one, of the, one, of the, one of them, and which is really important, is the sectioning of hair. So it gives you more control and makes your grooming really organized. So I will just select the hair cap and go into this particle panel here and click on new. So let's, I will go, try to go slowly and explain everything. So we want to switch it, the emitter type to hair. 
so it's going to just extrude this kind of nice hair strands or hair guides and i want to reduce the length of this hair because it's too long for what i need so i'm going to set it to 0 0.04 uh, which is quite small so i will increase it to 0.1 or 0.4 okay because the kind of hair i'm going for it's like a low cut um caucasian male hair so um next let's see if there's anything we want to do and we're good before i continue I, I like to name it for organization purposes so i'll call this back hair and once i'm happy with that i will go ahead and turn this number into zero the reason i'm doing this is because i will manually add the guide hair by myself so selecting this i will just go into particle edit and bring out this hard brush so in the count i will reduce it to um five um five is actually too much three and if i draw on this it's gonna just create a nice strand so there are two if you use without interpolated it's I don't know the real purpose for this, but I just leave it as interpolated. Okay, so for the option, I want to turn on X mirror. This enables you to um, just work on half of it. And right now it's not doing that. So there's no problem for that. We can just fix that. So I will just select the middle of it and wrap it. So I will just delete half of the hair and add mirror. Clip. Uh, I will check clipping to make sure it's combined. Okay, then I can apply the mirror, apply the scale and rotation. Do that again. Okay, so now if we go into the particle edit and add hair, it's going to apply in the other side so we don't want we will not have to work on the whole mesh itself okay so let's go back to the main view go out of the local view and let's start working so this stuff is distracting me one way to fix that is in the viewport display i can turn off the show emit emitter and just paint um groom the hair so you can just click on that so we're trying to create the back section of this hair so at this point you don't want to go and just um, start adding so many um, hair guides because your the whole scene will just get really um, dense very fast you want to actually go gently and build it up so to actually build up a nice groom you need to start from the bottom to the top so that you can um, accumulate volumes as you go up so let's start so we'll just start with this bottom place and in the side view use the comb brush and just put it into place so this can take you depending of on how depending on how how the hairstyle you're going for is or the level of perfection you're going for that's how much time this will take you okay so don't worry about the center being um, sym symmetry we can fix that after we create the whole hair so we'll just move this into place like this then we'll select person A and hide everything we can add more particles so the reason why this is doing like this is because i have the interpolated turned on so that's why it's uh, replicating the previous particle we have but if you turn it off then you can start afresh so i will just 
work from that with the comb brush and just pull this like this so we're building up gradually from the root so i have to unhide this and just move it into place So I'm happy with that. I can hide it. So if I add add brush again, I will turn off this interpolated. So when I just draw, it draws out it by default. How it is by default. So I can just place this here. So this is just basically the process. You go gradually till you get your final result. So when you're happy, you can unhide everything and just groom it more. Okay. In case you want more, if you, you feel that you need more geometry to work with, or more subdivision, you can increase it display and to add more curves for you more segments sorry okay so i like this i will hide it and add more so gradually you build it up rather than just adding so many particles that you lose control of and just use the comb brush and just push it into place So you can start adding some basic style of it, just packing up around here. Okay, so if you're happy with that, you can hide it. So let's just finalize the back portion of this hair. I use the add brush just add yeah okay with the comb I'll just push it into place Cool, so kind of happy with this. And let's just fix everything together. So if you're happy with how it looks, you can turn off the X mirror and then start working, start making it look different. Cut that base. Just move this in a bit once you resist the part step. Just make it look asymmetrical. Cool. So it's looking all right for now. So let's create the other portion of this hair. So the next portion will be creating is the you know what before we create the next portion let's just finalize the, the design of this back hair so we can use it as a foundation for the rest so let's add children particles before that i will increase the viewport step to something like four 
and then for the children particle i will set it to simple for now because i want to use this for something i i will turn the length to 0.1 okay and reduce the radius to this so the reason i'm doing this i want to use this as a reference when i'm painting the weight paint so i can just uh isolate this area as i told you earlier we can use vertex paint to just isolate some a certain part of the hair so that it will not exceed that so once i do that i can in the view setting show emitter and go into weight paint then i can start weight painting so i just draw an outline where the hair stops and begins if it's not too clear you can switch it to random I, that tends to display it better so i like to turn off symmetry for this because um, i want to have full control of the distribution i will just paint in the area so where it's red is going to the head are going to um the children here we appear there so okay so we've roughly filled out the area which we want the back hair to be so I will just go back to my material and in the particle I can hide it and then use interpolated so as I told you earlier interpolated try to just fill up the surface area best as it can and sometimes it's really good sometimes it's not the best so I'll just to, um, to just to tell it to follow a certain path we will just under vertex group density we can select that group and then for the length you can increase the length so it's just secluded to there and so let's give it name so that it's because we're having multiple vertex groups i'll call this back hair So let's play with some of the sets, the hair modifiers that we talked about earlier. So I showed you guys the pattern. So with pattern, it's like pushing the hair far from its far from the guide hair, like making it a bit scans. Um, scans I don't know, adding sparse to the hair. That's the correct word. That's what I was looking for. So most of, most times I like to leave it at zero because that's not what I'm going for. Um, you have the clump. So this clump um, creates this cool effect of it being closer to the guide hair. Depending, you can control whether the tip or the um, root. So you can control that by using this. Or better still, you can just set this to zero. And just use the curve. So the curve is the same thing, but you have better control. So if it's low, it's like that. So we're getting something like this. I don't like that one. Let's say something around here. Cool. So we also have a, a I'm so with this method I just showed you guys, you can work with interpolated because it fills out all the areas so you don't have any empty space. So this closer. Cool. So the hair is quite tight and neat um, but we want to fix that so I'll reduce it to 10 so we want to add some noise to the hair so to do that we'll go to the roughness so for this roughness um, before that I want to play with this um, knit type so I'll be setting it to coil so it's going to give us this um, coily effect so at first it may look unusable um, but let's play with it so 
um you can affect the area where the coil uh, um is going to influence so point eight will make it at the root somewhere around here um you can reduce the clump or the intensity that's the aptitude uh you could also play with the frequency so it's not so coily so i think the clump i added earlier was quite much um i'll just something like this and i want the frequency to be something like 0.6 because say guys here it doesn't need to be so coily uh maybe the frequency 0.2 okay so around something like this okay so i want to reduce the aptitude to point every point one so it's not so noisy cool so i'm quite happy with this um this style but i want to fix one more thing that is bugging me which is this hair there yeah. so i can fix that without affecting the rest by just selecting it and shift hiding the rest and now i can use the comb and just pull it in without affecting the rest of the hair okay and i can unhide everything so now we will not get that effect that disturbance again so it's looking quite neat i like it so let's go into the roughness and play with it so for the roughness you have uniformity you can add some asymmetry or just weirdness to the whole hair i usually don't use that so also i sometimes i use the end point to add make it noisy as you can see but for this hairstyle it's not going to do it justice so but one thing i always add in my hair is the randomness so this random is really cool so at first it just looks weird like this but then if you go to the threshold and set it to point maybe point eight or lesser so you start getting this kind of um stray hairs that just makes it look more realistic um you can reduce the noise let me increase it uh, a bit so for the size you can make it to be more like noisy like small frequency but with something like one point something you just get this kind of nice phrase uh, stray hair which i would just turn down a bit cool so it's looking quite nice let's... and let's see if we can increase the children and see the overall look I'll just increase this to 30. Okay, so it's looking quite nice. So now I will just go ahead and pause this video because I don't want to have to groom everything right here. And see you guys when I'm done. Okay, so I'm done grooming the hair. As you can see, it's on out descent. It's on out this um, descent. So let's say we are happy with this and we want to move forward. So to do that, uh, let's say we want to add like a cut here. We want to see more skin here around this corner. I know that sounds weird. <laughs> uh, let's say we want this place to have like a nice cool um, cut, something like that. So to do that, let's use the texture um, distribution method. And to do that, we'll just uh, collapse this and bring out the UV image editor and unwrap this by pressing U, the UV. So we'll end up with this kind of mesh um, object here. So we don't need to worry about that. Um, what we need to do is texture it. So to do that, I'm just going to create a new texture and name this. Just set it up black for now and all white and call this cap 
hair cap mask and hit ok so we'll have this as the base then we just i hope it doesn't crash <laughs> oh, blender crashed so this is an alpha view that is expected so just turn it on and move from there okay so it's good you always save your artwork so you don't need to start from scratch again so um so we ha we are there so i'll just turn on the show emitter so i can see what i'm painting and go into the texture paint so let's set it up so i want to set it to image and select hair cap mask okay so we have this so all we need to do is just paint the area where we want around here we want that to be black so I'll just paint this yep so I want that place to be to be cut like to be empty and scanty <laughs> I know I'm not explaining everything I just when I was grooming I lost my whole <laughs> module for this tutorial that's why it sounds a bit dull okay so after that we have a simple texture here we can just save this out first so location save it and then in the texture panel I want to go to so the aspect this texture is gonna affect mostly is gonna be the front hair and the side hair so let's set that up just collapse this In the texture panel, we'll just click on new, just call this hair mask, and that's all from here. So we need to go to the texture and switch it from displacement to front hair mask. And then we'll be selecting the hair cap paint, and let's see what happens. So nothing happens at first. Um, but when once you set up the mapping, sorry, the mapping I want to set from generated to UV map, nothing still happens. <laughs> um, then you have to go to the influence and uncheck generated time and set it to density, and then you before you start seeing the effect. Um, so let's repeat that for the front hair system too. So before that I want to just hide this emitter object and also increase the children to something like 15, 16 and also do that for the side hair. Okay and then also add a texture and I will use the hair mask. And in influence, I want to set it to density. <laughs> Nothing is happening. Uh, why is that? Anyway, I don't know why it's not going. Maybe it's like a bug or something. But that's the process of adding, using image to influence your hair system. Or you could just use the vertex paint as we did earlier. So that's basically it. So we've created a nice looking hair. And if I turn off the for the front hair okay so everything is looking good we need to set it back to coil so we get back the nice cool stuff we did earlier and let's do that check for the side hair too to make sure okay so that's basically that so this is the hair without 
the children here this is how it looks simple and if we add the children here we get this so finally um, the part we'll be looking at now is the render setting for the hair so it's quite easy the stuff you're going to be looking at is this hair shape so this defines how the hair is going to look i think if he lets you preview this in the viewport but i'm not i've not gotten my hand really on that but what i know is for the root if you increase the roots it's like let's say let me just add a cylinder to explain this better um, okay so let's say this is the hair strand uh, scale <laughs> scale shift z okay so let's just say this is a hair strand and if we have the tip set to zero we have something like this okay and if we have the root set to one it's gonna be like this then if we have the root set to something smaller like point one and two is gonna point one or point two we give you a reasonable effect quickly so you just get it looking like this so the more you reduce the roots you get it gets smaller see it gets zero and vanishes till eternity <laughs> okay so that's basically that you can also play with the entire radius that basically means even though you scale it reduce the root you can still just you it's like a global scale for the hair you can scale it like this that's I'm talking about the setting, the reduce scale. That's what I was just showing you. And close tip will tighten the edge. Like if you scale it with close tip selected, it's going to just close it. Like it's not an open tube again. So that's basically that for that. The hair setting. Um, finally. Um, once you set the material, let's say you have multiple materials and you just cut this blah, 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 blah. Okay, so we have multiple materials, but we want to... Uh, okay, we have multiple materials and we have also a nice hair material which we created. For the hair to see that, selecting the hair again, we go into the render tab and collapses in the render you want to switch it from any material you can switch the material right here as you can see uh, this is the place you switch it so any setting you do you have to replicate that setting in all the particle system because each particle system have its own uh, different setting and what else okay the parts this is really important this is going to really save your render time when rendering hair uh, so you can use this viewport display to preview how detailed the hair is because if it's set to uh, let's say zero it's gonna be really ugly as for the back hair but if you set to one you start getting the coil and everything so for this system it, 0.4 is decent Maybe for my final render, I'll just set it to 0.5 because I don't have a really solid computer for now. So maybe 0.5 is what I'll render with because except you really go close before you see that there are some polygon shapes. So I'll go with 0.5. So if I'm happy with that, I will set it to 0.5. To 5, sorry. So you just go through the hair system and determine how much um, detail you want to retain in the hair strand. So that's what you can use with that also you have the base spline so if you enable this it's like adding more subdivision on top subdivision so that's that so thank you guys for watching this tutorial i hope you enjoyed it don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button okay bye bye for now see you next time